What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of HRT. I hope your week was swell. I am excited to announce that this week's guest is Elliot. I met Elliot through Sam from the last episode. So if you haven't checked out the last episode with Sam, definitely go check that out because that was a great freaking episode. And make sure you stay tuned for this episode with Elliot because Elliot was fucking great. We had a really great conversation. Uh, He shared his coming out story. Um, how he got kicked out of his family's house when he came out as trans. And I really, really, really appreciate when people are vulnerable with me like that and share their stories because I know that a lot of trans people out there and a lot of trans people who listen to this podcast struggle with the exact same things. And I definitely think that Elliot's story was very inspiring and it shows that Us trans people can do anything, and we don't need nobody to be ourselves. So definitely, definitely, definitely stay tuned for Elliot's story. And make sure you go follow Elliot. Uh, All of his social medias will be linked below in the description. And make sure you follow me at HRT Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. I post almost every single day. Join my Patreon. No, subscribe to my Patreon. Join my Discord. I would appreciate it. I have so much bonus content on Patreon. And if you're not subscribed... It would really hurt my feelings, so please subscribe to that. The link to it is always in the description below. Okay, let's go talk to Elliot. I love y'all so much. Bye. I'm going to start by asking where you're from. I am from South Carolina. Uh, Greenville. That's where Ooh, I live. South Carolina. What's it like being in the South? Yeah. It's okay. I mean, it's not <laughs> as bad as like people play it out to be, but like it's not like it's not all that. Mm. I'd rather be somewhere else, but I could be somewhere worse at the same time. That's true. That's so. true. Do you have? Do you like want to move more north one day or no? I want to. Yeah, I want to move either to Colorado. Is what I'm thinking, mm. or. I've thought about moving to Connecticut because that's where Sam and all them live. And that's kind of where I want to be at with all, because those are my people. So, yeah. Right. I forgot. You're, you're like besties with Sam. Yeah. That's my, that's my boy. (laughs) I love that. Wow. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be only like an hour and a half, two hours away from me. if you moved. Yeah, exactly. And then we can hang out. Hell yeah. Exactly. Also, I think that like every trans guy's dream is to move to Colorado for some reason. I don't yeah. know why we all love Colorado so much. It was amazing. Like I've only been there one time, but I loved it. It was. It's just. It's beautiful, and the vibes are just where they need to be. Mm. So mm-hmm. you look like you'd you'd be happy in Colorado. You look Thank like you fit in. in I can smoke a lot of weed. So too. yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how old are you, by the way? I am twenty two. I just turned twenty two um, at the end of March. Period. I'm happy a little birthday. baby. That's eh, twenty two is like I'm getting I would call it a baby. I'm climbing yeah. the ladder. Yeah. You're on your way. <laughs> yeah. You're on your way. Uh how long have you been on hormones? I started hormones July of twenty twenty two. So almost two years now. Okay. Slay. Good for you. Good for you. How yeah. have you liked it so far? Are you on injections? I am. I um I'm so cute and I do it with my stomach. But okay. All right. I used to do it in my thigh, and I hated it. I had shot anxiety mm. every single time I did it. And then I switched, mm. and I was like, okay, this is a little better. So, so far, I like that. So, did you, when you switched to your stomach, did you no. have to get, like, diff, different needle? Were you, like, intramuscular, and then you switched to sub-Q? Or yeah. did you just, like, change the needle? Like, what goes into that when you change? It, you just honestly, have to switch the needle? Is at least that for me, I... They had me use the same stuff for it, so. That's so confusing. I, know. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know either, but like for me, it's always worked. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this debacle so many times. Yeah, I'm the one it. weird trans guy who does his shot every two weeks instead of every week. I did my shot every two weeks for fucking up until maybe two months ago. Really, you're and like then, the first person I've yeah. ever heard that from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you doing? <laughs> You still do it every two weeks? Yeah. Mm. What's your dose? If you don't I am point six. No idea what that means. <laughs> 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 I thought I was going to know. I never forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I think I'm... Okay, wait. 
I talk about it a lot, but I don't care anymore. I, I need to figure this out. I do. I used to do 100 milligrams every two weeks, okay. right? Uh-huh. Now, or I, then I got switched to weekly, so I would do 50 milligrams yeah. every two weeks. Yeah. But then I was like, guys, I have cramps. What do I do? And they were like, exactly. okay, we're going to lower your dosage a little bit. So now I'm doing – I go up to the four instead of the five. Is that point yeah. four? Or is that 40 mill? Is it the same thing as 40 milligrams? Do you know? Because I don't fucking know. I don't know either. I feel I mean, like not me quizzing you right now. Four, but like I could be wrong, you know. Because hmm. then I would understand if I'm point four, then you're point six. Yeah, that makes sense. If you're every two weeks. Yeah, yeah, because mine's a little higher since I'm every two weeks. So, hmm. but not us doing math. I know. <laughs> not us fucking <laughs> doing math right now. <laughs> also, I like to wear both like in like the red family and what we're wearing. Hell like, yeah! No. This is my favorite matching. freaking. Yeah, dude, my favorite I sweatshirt. I love it. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> now, okay, you said you've been on testosterone for two years, right? Yeah, ne- nearly two. Yeah, it'll be two years in July. Period, period. Oh. Wait, how do you get your hormones? Um, I went – I go through um, a primary care doctor, um, so and I, then I just get them sent to CVS. So nice. <laughs> You should do that too. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's harder. Oh, I agree. It kind of just depends know. on where you live straight up. So, cause right. I've heard a bunch That's of true. like horror stories about it, but I've always been fine with it at least. So. Well, that's good. That's yeah. Good. Uh, now what about surgeries? Have you gotten any? Do you want any? I have not gotten any, but I want to get top surgery. Um, I don't have any plans yet to get it. Um, just because I have a smaller chest as it is. So I don't yeah. really see it as a necessity at this point in my life. Um, like I want it definitely, but I don't right. have mm. to get it right now, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, but, no, for sure. That's exactly kind of how I felt when I first started testosterone. It wasn't like I knew I wanted it, but it wasn't like I yeah. need it right now because I also yeah. had a smaller chest. So it wasn't yeah. like, but then as time went on, I found like, I didn't even know I was like extremely dysphoric until like mm-hmm. one day I found myself like sitting like this all the time. Yes. yes. <laughs> Anytime no, like, if I was walking and the wind was blowing like towards me or some shit. Yes, I don't and you're like, like, yeah, <laughs> you're like, please stop, please. <laughs> right. Or like, all my I fucking at, shirts. Um, yeah. Yeah, I work at a place where you have to dress up kind of for, for my job, mm-hmm. and, like, I'll tuck in my shirt, and sometimes it's, like, tight right here, and I'm, like, I mean, mm-hmm. I wear tape all the time, but, like, still, it's, like, mm-hmm. that little part, and I'm, like, please don't do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. All my shirts just fucking yes, literally. worn out like this all the time. Yes. <laughs> horrible. I ruined every single one of them. Uh, when did you come out as trans? I came out um, April, I think of 20 well it, it was like late april or early may of 2022 um i realized mm-hmm. i was trans then and then um i eventually i told everybody around me before i told my parents because i knew that they were not accepting and i was still living in their house um mm-hmm. but i eventually came out to them after i cut my hair short um which was the best thing i ever did for myself because it was like as soon as i did that i was like yep that's i was like i'm trans <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I told my parents, so I was kind of forced to tell my parents because I walked into the house and my mom was like, do you want to be a boy or like, are you trying to look more like a boy? And I was like, well, yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> and that conversation was like, it was awful, but, um, so fun. It was, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it sucks. But <laughs> at this point I've come to terms with it, you know, but that's good. That's good. I, Stayed in the house, I think, for about a week, and then I came home one day from work, and all my stuff was packed in the um, living room, and yeah, and my mom was upset because I was speaking to someone that she no longer spoke to in her life, and she, I guess, went through the phone bill or something and found that I was talking to her, but she was the only adult at that time who was giving me support. Um Mm. and my mom got mad about it and they kicked me out for talking to her basically <laughs> which Whoa, i think shit, is like a little dude. like is a lie like i think they kicked me out for being trans but they used that to do it but mm. Mm. i'm really sorry that's it, how it, old were you when this happened i was 20 mm. what? jeez that's yeah. still very young mm. damn dude okay wait so 
you you came out in 2022. Yes. yes. You came out to like I'm guessing like your friends and mm. close ones, everyone yeah. who wasn't your parents. Yeah. You cut your hair. Yes. And then told your parents. And then did you start testosterone after you told your parents? I started. So I got kicked out at the beginning of May, and I started testosterone in July when I was no longer associated with my parents. Because when I okay. came out to them, my stepdad told me that he would never allow me to go on testosterone in that house. Jesus Christ. That must have been really hard. Yeah. It was probably the one of the worst things I've ever been through. Yeah, dude. I can only imagine. I think I've only had one other guest who got kicked out of their home. I don't remember if he chose to leave or not. Mm. But either way, him living in his house was clearly just not safe and yeah. unsupportive for him. Yeah. Um, and talking to him about it, like... I just, I can't imagine what that would feel like. I mean, like, those are supposed to be your parents, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you, like, talk to your parents now at all or no? I'm in a place where we're trying to rebuild that connection because before I came out, me and my mom, like, used to be, like, best friends. Like, like that was my girl. Mm -hmm. Like, I love, me and my mom are very mm -hmm. similar in our personalities. So, like, it, she was someone who I could really relate to on that nature because she really understood me but then that happened it was like a switch was flipped so mm. but um we're it's still rocky but we're in mm -hmm. the early stages it's not to a point where i can have them calling me my preferred name and pronouns yet um mm. but it's to a point where i can tell that they can tell that it bothers me when they like misgender me and all right. that stuff um right but now were they like, did they ever know about trans people prior to you coming out? Like, were they educated about it at all? Or was it like a completely new thing when you came out? So I, they weren't educated, but they definitely didn't have a positive, like, outlook on trans people. I know that for a fact, mm -hmm. because there would always be comments made about, like, whenever, like, trans people are mentioned in the news or whatever, um, they would always have something negative to say about it. And like, mm. I've had conversations with my mom before I came out, um, just talking about how if you're dating a trans person and they don't tell you that they're trans, like they're deceiving you and all this stuff. And mm. I would always tell her like, that's not the case, but you know, mm. so that, that, that like played a big part too on me not wanting to tell them that I was trans and also me coming to terms that I was trans because I knew that they wouldn't accept me. So I was like, right. oh yeah, that's not me. That's not me, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I know that they, they've never really had a positive outlook on it, but I've tried to educate them as much as I can, but it doesn't seem like they always are willing to listen, if that makes sense, right. but. Yeah, no, and I mean, it's also not, I, I'm, I think you're doing a good thing by, you know, trying to educate them and, you know, right. let them see that you're not some, you know, weirdo that they think might think you yeah. are, you know what exactly. I mean, by transitioning, but it's also not your job at the end of the at the end of the day yeah. too and i think that's something i had to learn too i feel like mm -hmm. completely different scenarios and extremes but because uh, my dad had a hard time coming to terms with the fact that i'm trans as well yeah and me and my dad don't really like talk about you know the uncomfortable things in life we never did yeah. even before i was trans so like i don't know i felt at a point it was my duty to like mm -hmm educate him and everybody else yeah and i think doing this i think <laughs> i think i still feel like it's my job sometimes but yeah. like i think it is important to remind yourself that like it's you don't you shouldn't have to educate someone for them to like love and respect and support you you know what i mean yeah i agree i think that's a something that a lot of trans people have to go through yeah i feel like going through that mindset now when you got kicked out, it was just one day you came home and you said all your shit was packed up? Yep. all Literally all of my stuff was in bags and stuff. And right, so like you walk into my house, you open the door and there's like a like hallway like right there. And all my stuff was in the hallway. And my mom Damn. was like, well, since you want to talk to blah, 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 we thought you might as well go live with her. And I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What did you do after that? Where'd you go? 
So originally I went to, cause I called my best friend immediately and she was there immediately to help me just put all my stuff mm-hmm. in the car and like, just be there while it was happening because it got so bad. Like my mom just kept yelling stuff in my face to further agitate me. Um, like it got mm-hmm. so bad. Like my mom was yelling at me to hit her at one point And I was like, I was about to, but in my head, I was like, I'm not going to do that because it's going to go the wrong way. But when she was yelling that at me, my stepdad actually locked my best friend out of the house. So she couldn't come in there. So she wouldn't see all that happening. Damn. But um, we joke about it now. But at one point, my mom yelled at me and was like, you need to get the devil out of you. And I was like, (laughs) girl, like, (laughs) calm down. (laughs) Like, me? You're the one with the devil in you. (laughs) <laughs> I'm guessing they're very religious then. Yes. Mm. Extremely. That's like a huge part of it to where like my mom always, ha- like they've always told me like, we can't accept you or we can't support you because it goes against our religion. And I'm like, where does it say in the Bible that you can't accept your trans kid? It does not say that anywhere. Mm. Mm-hmm. And even if it did, why would you want to follow that religion? Right. Right. As if the Bible is more is worth more than your child's life. Exactly. Like, exactly. That, uh, mm-hmm. that would make me so mad. Oh, trust me. I've had I've had so many like arguments <laughs> about it. It's ridiculous. But I started um I went to my best friend's house for I think the first few nights I stayed there. Um and had a, all my stuff was just in my car. And then um where I'm at now is actually my other best friend's house and um, their family took me in. So I've lived here since then. So. Oh, that's really yeah, great. This was, um, this was their brother's room, but he lives with his girlfriend now. So they let me okay. have it. And I'm finally doing stuff to it, as you can see. But <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> I love the vibes in there. It looks sick. Hey, I, I, my room in, in my parents' house was like my safe spot. So... Right. To be able to finally open that up here, it's nice because I finally feel like this yeah. is my room. So, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Now, how far away are you from your parents' house? <laughs> I am five minutes down the road. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can literally walk there. <laughs> now, another question for you. How do you, how do you, were you like religious growing up? I was raised to be religious. Um, and I guess for a little bit, I probably did like think I was, but I never felt like a connection with God. Like I just Mm -hmm. didn't. And like, I remember Mm -hmm. one time I was having a conversation with my parents, um, because one of my ex-girlfriends had a tattoo on her leg and I think it said, I think it said witchcraft or something. And Mm -hmm. my parents were like, why would you want to, you know, date somebody like that or associate with somebody like that? And my stepdad was like well what is like what is god to you and all this stuff and i was like i was like my lord and savior <laughs> i was like i don't believe that like with any part of me um yeah but i think i also just have like such a like strained relationship with the two because of my parents beliefs so it's like i kind of like i don't want to believe in something that makes you push your kid out of your life like i just don't want to yeah. do that and i'm yeah. also like into like trusting the universe and that's more so what i believe in like i believe that the universe mm-hmm. has a plan for you and that you really can't mess that up because everything's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen so i believe that too period yeah. i believe that as well now okay dang can i ask so it was your mom and your stepdad you said mm-hmm. yes is your dad in the picture at all or no so i I was always raised to believe that, well, like, we okay, me and my mom moved to Ohio when I was in elementary school um, because my parents got a divorce when I was young, um, and mm-hmm. I was kind of raised to believe that he was, like, this deadbeat dad, didn't want anything to do with us, but I mm-hmm. learned after all this that it actually wasn't that and that my mom kind of just kept him from us, um, mm-hmm. so I've, we've been speaking recently, it's still, like, we're still building that relationship back, but he has been accepting and mm-hmm. I have a stepmom too, and she's been pretty accepting of it too. So it's nice to have that. That's good. It's just, sometimes it's, it's difficult yeah. to be so independent for so long and then 
have to, you know, like have a relationship with your parents again. Cause I feel like you have somebody that you're like having to tell every detail of your life to and like where you are and all this stuff. And it's like, I got so used to not doing that, that it's difficult to right. get back to that. But I'm also very grateful right. that I do have that, you know? So. Yeah. A hundred percent. Do you, are you an only child or you have siblings? I have a sister, um, an older sister and she, I don't really know what her outlook was on it straight up. Um, because she always mm-hmm. really followed my mom's beliefs and just kind of went with what she said. I don't think my sister ever really thought for herself. I think she just followed everything mm-hmm. that they did. Um, and then she mm-hmm. also got pregnant after the time they got kicked out. And then she really needed my parents. So I think she got in. kind of viewed supporting me as going against them. And then she couldn't go against them because she needed them. If that makes sense. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and not that I think that it's it's right to mm-hmm. f- like side with them in any way because obviously that's your sibling. You should support your sibling no matter what. I, that's what I believe. But I do think that it is hard to get yourself out of the mindset of your parents. You know what I mean? Because my mom was very Republican when I was growing up, and like she pushed those views down my throat (laughs) growing up yeah and i i'm i said in the last episode i would go to school preaching that shit and i think back to that and i cringe i'm like holy shit yeah like vile shit i would think and like not not that my mom's vile or like anything like that but like she had some republican views that are um cancelable now (laughs) are you kidding me (laughs) like and she's different now she doesn't she doesn't leaving any of that stuff so much anymore but i don't know man like it's it was it took like my friends being like dude no like you're Mm -hmm. wrong like no literally you're the asshole yeah like like, yeah you're the problem (laughs) (laughs) like fuck (laughs) yeah dude so when i don't know you said she's your your older sister yeah she's about five years Mm -hmm. older than me Okay, in your your twenties, you got you, got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to get out of that mindset of your when your parents like say it to you all the time. But you mm-hmm. have you don't want to be like thirty years old just regurgitating everything your parents say. You have to have to get your own opinions at some point. Exactly. You have to think for yourself. Like it, it's so important to think for yourself. Like it got right. me it, right. like to where I am today. Like so, one hundred percent. That's that hurts me a little bit though that you didn't have any really support from your immediate family yeah did you have any from like extended family i mean i like when i would post on like facebook and stuff like that i would have like cousins Mm -hmm. and stuff comment like in support but it wasn't like uh they're reaching out to me in a way which i didn't really hold against them because like i mean i don't i understand but i never really I didn't really honestly talk to any of my family for a long time after I I got kicked out. Like I made sure to, I removed a lot of people on my mom's side from all my social medias because I didn't want anybody showing her my stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. And I knew that they would side with her because she's very, she knows how to turn the situation to make her look like she's the victim. So Mm. I was not, I was just wasn't doing it. (laughs) It's you're smart though for just kind of, doing your own thing yeah. and backing away yeah i think a lot of young trans people try and not saying that either one is right or wrong mm-hmm. but i think a lot of young trans people try to like fight it and like mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a hard fight to fight and i think it's so hard it can it can really you can lose a piece of yourself trying to mm-hmm. fight that fight and yep. i think you definitely made the right decision and kind of just like backing off and yeah. just doing your own thing. Because yeah. then at the end of the day, I feel like they'll, you show people that you are going to be you, whether they accept it or not. And exactly. their opinions, their outlooks, their religious beliefs mean absolutely jack fucking shit to you at yep. the end of the day. Exactly. And then they start to be like, they start to be like, well, damn, well, yeah. shit. I kind of, you know, I, that's my kid. I want to be in his life. No mm-hmm. matter what, you know what I mean? I think that's kind of what happened with my dad too. It's like, well, I'm going to yeah. do this without you or not. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think, yeah, you definitely made the right decision. I can't, I can't imagine though, like 
that's your family. They're supposed to be the ones who like ride or die with you at the end yeah. of the day. So I'm guessing you had to like, did you feel like you had to rely like maybe on like your closest friends at the time and stuff for love and support? Yeah, I really, I mean, cause like I have, I have a really good close circle of, of friends. Um, and I, I did feel like for a little bit that I did have to rely on them. And it was kind of hard for me at first because I, it was always hard for me to ask for help growing up because my parents kind of mm-hmm. made that seem like a burden to them. And I didn't want to be that burden to my friends. So it was difficult for me to be vulnerable and tell people that I needed help, like just places to stay or like I had times where I had to ask some friends for money. Um, and that took a lot out of me because I hated doing that. Um, but Luckily, I had amazing people who were down to do whatever it took to get me to a place where I was comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. And I had I had multiple people like send me money if I needed it. I had people, I had multiple multiple people on my phone offering me their homes, like their couches, like just anything if I needed it. Um, so it was. That's great. I really i I saw who truly cared for me in the ways that I needed them to care for me. So. Now, do you think that, like, obviously that, like, if your parents did, say they did accept you and you didn't get kicked out or anything, do you think, this is a big question, and I'm aware of that, so if you don't have an answer, don't worry, (laughs) but do you think you would be, like, at the same place you are, the same person you are right now as a trans man, or no? Like, do you think it shaped you in the way you want to be? I think it shaped me into the way I want to be. I truly think that it's helped me learn so much about myself and about what it means to be independent and to truly just, I mean, like I've, I rely on my friends, but I really rely on myself a lot. And I put a lot of pressure on myself sometimes because I am so independent and I want to do everything Mm -hmm. myself before I do ask for help because I know I'm capable of doing it myself. But Mm -hmm. I think that, that trauma has truly gotten me to where I need to be. It's helped me realize that there are people out there like me who feel so alone, but at the end of the day, you're not alone. And it's just helped me open so many doors to like share my story and to just help people because I just want literally to help anybody I can because it sucks Mm -hmm. to be in the place that I was at. And I don't wish that for yeah. literally anybody because, like, it, that's the worst thing I've ever been through. But I also wouldn't take it back because I wouldn't yeah. know half the things that I know if I didn't go through that. I don't think I've, I would have met half the people I've met because, like, I met Sam because we booked to – the first photo shoot I did with him, um, it was um, – I'm trying to think of how to describe it. We put, like, book pieces on me, and then, like, some of them were, like, excerpts from a book about getting kicked out. And we kind of took pictures of those close up um, wow. and I really let him share my story. And then a year later we did one where I was like burning newspaper. Um, and that was like me shedding my past and all that. And mm-hmm. I don't think I would have ever reached out to him to help share my story if it hadn't happened that way. So yeah, I'm glad that that's creative. As hell. I'm glad that I have that even though it sucked, but right. I feel like a lot of trans people go through such hard things that they end up with that same kind of mindset at the end of the day of like, yeah. I hate, I hate that I went through that. It didn't feel good. I never want to go through it again, but I'm glad that I did because mm-hmm. it shaped me into the person I am today. And I think there is very little people who can say that about themselves that, you know, yeah, and who get to turn themselves into somebody they want to be, you know what I mean? And I exactly. think that's much yeah harder said than done easier said than done hello what the fuck um (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i had a question for you though and now i don't remember what i was i don't know i'm just i'm happy that you are in a space where you get to be yourself without anybody's judgment and you made it on your own and obviously with the help of loved ones and whatnot which is super important that's why it is so important to have uh people around you who love who love and support you and yes that 
should always be your parents. But when it's not, that's why it's important to surround yourself with fucking good people. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I feel like it's so much more special to having people around you who don't have to love you conditionally or yeah, unconditionally. Um, but they do anyways. Right. So I think yeah, it's, no, 100%. I've come to terms with the fact that that is amazing to have. And I'm so lucky yeah. to have that. Yeah. 100%. Now, do you, when did you like, cause I know, you know, Sam, but when did you like start to meet more trans people? Was Sam your first trans friend? I think so. I think he was. Yeah. Um, because I met Sam August of 2022, and we did a photo shoot for me, and then at the time, we did one with the girl I was dating, but she's whew, crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we became like acquaintances, I would say, at first, mm-hmm. and then we started talking a little bit more, and then I booked with him for Halloween, um, mm-hmm. and I did a Halloween shoot with him that year, too. And then I think we became closer after that trip because, like, I stayed at his house and stuff like that. Um, And then he really introduced me to a lot of people that I'm very close with now. Not even him, like, directly introducing me, but I reached out to a lot of people he did shoots with because I felt like we would get along. Mm -hmm. And, like, now they're some of my best friends. Yeah. And then I went there. I went to Connecticut last year for Halloween. Me and my best friend went there. And um met a whole bunch of trans people and it was for me it was insane because i was like i don't have any of this back home like i don't know i mean i know a few trans people that live here that i like went to high school with and stuff like that but we were never really like friends it was more so like an acquaintance Mm. um so to have to be surrounded by so many trans people when i was in connecticut it was like it was just insane and i felt so like heard by everybody around me because mm. I didn't, I don't get to feel that often. Like I know my friends understand me, but they don't understand me in that aspect. Oh yeah, it's so it different. was nice to have people who really did. Yeah, mm-hmm. I. That's really cool. You know, I hadn't had any trans friends before this podcast. Like none. I had never yeah. spoken to another trans person before starting HRT, yeah. and I'm realizing now that all of my trans friends are all virtual like i've met so Mm -hmm. many good people and like hearing you talk about how you were like in a room and like hanging out with all these trans people in person i'm like damn like i want that (laughs) yeah dude you gotta you gotta come to the freaking halloween party this year yeah dude i would love to i was talking to sam about that that would be super cool yes i it's really cool i uh i am planning a trip to meet two of my past guests um, because we've become so close and like yeah. those re- that type of relationship is uh, like I, that is what I was missing uh, I'm seven years on testosterone now exactly. like that was what I was mm-hmm. missing the entire time and it was exactly what I yeah. fucking needed and even though like I never actually met them in person it's like and I know that like cis people do this all the time and I'm sure they feel the same fucking way but like yeah I don't know the fact like having two trans guy best friends is just like mm-hmm. I don't know, even know how to explain it. Somebody you can like. It changes everything, truly. Yeah. It's somebody you can like mm-hmm. tell anything to with no judgment and they get exactly how you feel. It's like super important to have trans people, people in your life. I like can't stress that enough. I say it all the fucking time and I know y'all are probably fucking tired of hearing it, but like, <laughs> I love it. I absolutely fucking love it. Yeah. Um, so I want to dive more into like the support of family in general and like maybe your opinions on like surrounding that since you went through it. Yeah. Now, given everything you went through to the person you are today, do you think that being supported by your family is crucial for somebody's transition? I think that at the beginning of my transition, I really did think it was crucial, um, which is why I kind of suppressed that part of me for so long because I knew I wasn't going to get that support at the end of the day. Um, Like, I constantly told myself, you're not a man. You're not a man. Like, you were not a man. Mm. Like, I, like, played on, like, the 
non-binary agenda for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think we all think it's kind of crucial at the beginning because your parents and your blood family are people who are supposed to love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you kind of think that you have to have that for the rest of your life. But then it kind of, for me at least, a switch was kind of flipped after I got kicked out because I realized who I could really rely on and who I could really just be myself around instead of suppressing every part of me that really makes me me because I did that every single day in my house. Um, I would just go right upstairs and not talk to my parents. It got so bad. Like I would just do that every day because I knew that I couldn't be myself. And I learned to accept the fact that if I can't be myself around you in the ways that I need to be myself around you, then I don't need you in my life. Mm. Um, and it's hard for people to realize that it was hard for me to realize that, mm-hmm. but I don't think at the end of the day that you have to have a relationship with your parents to progress in this journey. Like, I think that it can be important hundred percent, but I think that as long as you have a certain support system, then that's all that matters. I agree with you. 1000%. And like, yeah, if it was crucial, there would be a lot less trans people out there. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really, really sucks. And it's heartbreaking to like see in here. I mean, like I've had guests who, who are in the same boat as you, who, you know, their parents were horrible to them, but they, mm-hmm. some of them, you know, kind of broke free and kind of did what you're doing is like, fuck it. I'm going to do it no matter what. And I see some people yeah. kind of sticking to their parents a little bit and like kind of begging for that love and respect. And that's valid. I'm yeah. not saying that's not valid. I think everybody goes about it a different way, but it does hurt to see because you, you should not have to beg for love, especially from your own blood. No. You should not have to no. beg for love and respect. Like, and the whole religion thing makes it even worse. It makes it even fucking worse because yes. there's, there is not, and I mean, no hate to your parents whatsoever, but yeah, no, I mean, you're good. <laughs> there is nothing in this world that you should believe in more than your own child. Like that has always blown my fucking mind. Put that on a t-shirt. Smart guy. Smart <laughs> fucking guy. That's a great idea. Actually, Marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Now this might be a loaded question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Uh, given your situation but do you think that not supporting your trans child makes you a bad parent i don't know it is a loaded question but i have a loaded answer Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i mean point blank yeah i do straight up like yes i do think it makes you a bad parent because i think that if you spend so many years like raising a kid and you know, just loving the idea that you want to love for your kid. Um, And then they come to you and they say that they're trans. And the first thing that you do is spew out every negative thing you know about trans people, bully them, like throw away any willingness to learn. I do think that makes you a bad parent because at the end of the day, you're supposed to be the person who loves me and supports me unconditionally. And for you to not even listen or take the time to try and learn about who I am, then yeah, you're a shitty parent at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that means that they don't have the ability to change Mm -hmm. because I think everybody processes things in their own ways and takes some time to learn things. Um, And I do think like you're able to become a better person and a better parent. Um, But in those times when you're consistently, like for me, I, have received like spews of text messages from my stepdad or from like my grandma, like just explaining how this is not a good thing for me. My stepdad has bullied me, made me feel like basically called me stupid for it. And then I've received multiple like videos and articles about people detransitioning. And it's like, I get that that happened to them, but that does not mean that's me. Um, and for you to only be doing research on the negative aspects of it shows that you don't care. Yep. Like, and I'm not down with that. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I think if you don't support your trans kid, yeah, I do think you're a shitty parent. But I do think 
there's always room for change because right. I do believe everybody is capable of that. Mm-hmm. You don't have to stay a shitty parent. You know what I mean? Because exactly. like, parents mm-hmm. are humans too. My mom is a human and mm-hmm. that blows my mind. You know what I mean? Like she she makes mistakes too. And like yeah. I've seen I've seen parents of trans people be horrible and then flip a switch mm-hmm. and be the best. And like I would exactly. never look yep. at them as a shitty person because you're supposed to grow. Like, oh my God, like exactly. I called myself a Republican when I was in a freshman in high school. Like exactly. I grew and I'm a great fucking person now, damn it. Like, <laughs> like we're supposed to grow. Yeah. Like I, I would never yeah. judge somebody who used to be transphobic. Does that make sense? Like Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Because at the end of the day, you got to where you're supposed to be at. Right. Like that shows me growth. I'm like fucking slay. Hell yes. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I asked you that because I've seen people say that even parents get to have their own opinions, mm-hmm. which bothers me because yeah, being transphobic, and this doesn't even go for parents, it's just like, I hate the like the argument of, well, everyone's entitled to their own opinion when it comes to transphobia because, yep. um, no, that's just like your morals, like, I, like, <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm, that, exactly. That's not an opinion in my book. That just makes you. No, a it's not. Person. I don't think so either. Right. Exactly. That's like a human right. And like you're saying that like another mm-hmm. human being doesn't deserve rights because of their gender, because of like. Wh- for what? Literally for what? It makes me so mad. Like what? And, and it doesn't make sense to me because it's like, how is that affecting you? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything maliciously. I'm not killing people. Like I'm literally <laughs> just. Being the gender that I know and I'm always am. Right. And it doesn't affect you. And like when it comes to parents, it's like, again, like along with the Bible thing, like an opinion, you're, you're trusting an opinion over your own child. Are we being for exactly. real right now? Like, oh my God. Literally. Ugh. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of reminds me like I, I'm going to say something like really maybe out of pocket and really deep right now, but That's okay. I remember watching the news one day after a school shooting, okay? And Mm -hmm. they were interviewing the mother of the shooter. Mm -hmm. And they were, like, outside, whatever. I I don't fucking know. I was a kid. But they were, like, asking her these questions. And I she said something along the lines of, I love my child, but I hate what he did. And if a mother can still love their child after that mm-hmm. and you can't after love that. your child because they're trans go to hell mm-hmm. go to hell like no i agree like that is and crazy. i hate the i hate the idea because i've been told this so many times i hate the idea of my mom telling me i never told you that i didn't love you or telling mm-hmm. me oh i love you i love you no you love the person i used to be right you're not showing me love for who i am today mm-hmm. and that's i'm i don't need that love for the person in the past because I didn't even love that person in the past. So how are you loving that person in the past? Mm-hmm. Like I hate, I hate when she tries to say that to me because it's like, mm-hmm. I need you to love me for me today, not for me in the past. Right, a hundred percent. I feel you. Look, like I say it all the time, moms are allowed to have a grace period of not getting it and not understanding it because yeah, agree. Mm-hmm. that's your mom. She's she has that is the only person in your life that has to like grieve maybe who you once were everybody else i'm like shut the fuck yeah. up you don't need to grieve who i was no, literally, like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. like my mom fine you get to grieve for like a month or two but yeah. after that get on board yeah. <laughs> no literally like come on get with the program right <laughs> right but anything longer than that it's like i i can't help you you know what i mean no it's like i i shouldn't have to constantly educate you on it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cuz that's not fair I agree. Um, we've definitely covered this, but my next question to you was, I'm the type of person who thinks that blood family doesn't mean anything unless it's met with love, respect, and support. And I was going to ask if you agree, but I'm pretty sure you agree. <laughs> I do agree. I'd like a thousand, a million percent. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be here without my people. So. Right. And that's that comes to... The chosen family versus blood family mm-hmm. type of thing. Do you kind of feel like chosen family can just become more important at the end of the day? 100%. Yeah. I think at least 
at this point in my life, I know for a fact my chosen family is more important to me. Like, I went to my parents for Christmas last year um, because of another personal issue that was happening. I felt like I just needed to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, But while I was there, I just kept thinking in my head, I was like, this is not my family. I was like, I'm not with my people. Right. And from that moment on, I think I've really accepted the fact that my family is my chosen family. Like I got a tattoo on the back of my leg last year for, um, with, with the Matilda lyric. Um, and it was, um, you can start a family who will always show you love. And yeah, <laughs> no, trust me. I, I was, I was balling. Like, <laughs> oh, that killed me right in the heart. Yeah. That one got me, especially cause <laughs> yeah. I love that fucking song too. Like it's so good. Oh. It's so good. Ooh. But I, I wouldn't trade them for the world. It doesn't mind. I would die for all those people in a heartbeat. Like, yeah. Yeah. My people. Chosen family over everything, man. Like, and you know. No, 100% always. You sound like you also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if your blood family, if your mom, your stepdad called you up right now and was like, I'm so sorry. I take back everything I've said. I support you. I love you. I love that you're trans. You sound like you would be like, hell yes. Let's start a new relationship all over right now. Yeah. Am I right about that? I would, and then bleak have an eye. Yeah, and Honestly, that's yeah. all. That's all. Like, that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if your mom or your stepdad knows that, and still isn't there, like that hurts my heart. Because like you could have that. Yeah. You could have your your son. No, exactly. In your you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But because like, of religion, are we kidding? Literally because of that, because of a, because of a book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes me so mad, brother. That <laughs> makes me so mad for you. Hey, I mean, it's, I appreciate that. It's, it, it sucks, but like, I've, like I said, I've really come to terms with it. Good. Like it, obviously like it, there's a part of me where I can feel that that sting that I don't have that relationship and it does hit me harder on some days, but I think I constantly have to remind myself that I do have people who love me for me and that's all that matters. Period. You should be very, very proud of yourself because not a lot of people can do what you've done. And yeah. I do just want to say, I'm going to get emotional. Holy shit. I don't think I've ever gotten emotional. <laughs> don't cry, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, <laughs> there is not a lot of people who can do what you've done. Not a lot of yeah. trans people, not a lot of people in general. And it takes balls. It takes giant, huge fucking balls to get up on the internet yeah, and tell I got people two of them. <laughs> and to tell people <laughs> what you've been through and shit. Like it's not yeah. easy. And you look happy. You look like you've done Thank it on you. your own. And I'm so so proud yeah. of you. And I think by you Thank sharing you. your story, your because I know there's there's definitely some trans kids who are going to listen mm-hmm. to this and feel less alone. So I think you should be yeah. proud of yourself for telling your story. Thank you. 100. Um, with that being said, do you maybe have any advice for trans people, trans kids who have been kicked out of their family homes? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's really important to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing and to remind yourself that you're the only person who really knows you inside and out. Um, nobody else knows exactly what you're thinking and what you're going through and what you're feeling except for you. And I think it's really important to remind yourself of that. Like I, after I got kicked out, I think I truly was able to blossom into who I was meant to be because I confided myself to, you know, be the child my parents always wanted. Um, I did that for a long time. And I think after getting kicked out, it really pushed me to realize that, I'm the only person who's going to truly have me until the end of time. And it's really important to just remind yourself that you're doing this for a reason and to remind yourself that it's not always going to be this hard because sometimes parts of our transition are going to be harder than they are. Mm. And sometimes it's important to realize that what you're doing in the present is really going to affect how you're going to live your future. Um, And that's how I, kind of got through every day I was reminding myself that this is not going to be my life forever and I'm not going to feel that pain in my chest forever and it's also just important to lean on the people who do care about you because 
if you surround yourself with love, you kind of, in a way, forget that you don't have that love from the people that you wanted it from, if that makes sense. And, I mean, it, it doesn't make up for it, but it does help fill that void. And it's also just important to ask for help when you need to. And I know for me, it was hard to ask for help, but I had to do that to get to the point that I'm at. And I had to remind myself that there's people who love me. And I know not everybody has that out there. And you kind of just have to reach out sometimes to people and kind of make those connections because there's going to be at least one person out there that gets you like at the end of the day, there's going to be at least one person who understands and who's willing to listen and willing to love you or give you a place to stay or whatever it takes. But it's important to, sometimes you have to put your pride aside to be in a comfortable spot as much as it sucks. Sometimes that's how you have to survive sometimes. And that took me a lot to realize, but yeah, dude, beautiful. I love that. I agree. I think that also like there, you pretty much said it, but I think trans people who are in that process of coming out and aren't getting the support that they need, need to remember to trust themselves too. Like, as you said, Mm -hmm. nobody's going to know you better than you. And just because there's, a million people shouting from the goddamn fucking rooftops that you're wrong and that you're just a girl, you're just Mm -hmm. a boy and that you're mentally ill. Mm -hmm. They don't know you. They don't know what's like in your head. You Mm -hmm. are you and they cannot tell you who you are. And I think you said it beautiful. Beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. (sighs) That was a lot to say. I'm out of breath. (laughs) I know. Me too. I had to take some water. (laughs) Uh, This was great. I really appreciate you. Before we go, Share your trans song of the week with me. Okay, so my song is a well, hold on. I need to tell the story first. Do it. When I started my job, um, there was an older woman who worked there, and I kind of explained my story to her. Mm-hmm. And she told me one day she came into work and she told me this song reminded me or reminded her of me. And it is a Whitney Houston song, and it's uh, "Greatest Love of All." And it's just a song about just loving yourself and how self-love is the most important part of Mm -hmm. just living. And you can't live in anyone else's shadow because you're the main character, basically. Period. Trans people are the main character. Exactly. For real. (laughs) I love that. That will be in the description below for anybody who wants to give it a listen. I think that's an adorable freaking story because – and I think that's the theme of this episode – um oh you have another one do you want to share your second one there oh yeah so there's another one and this one's a little more sad but um it is marching band by mickey ratsula and they're a non-binary artist they're a bit of a smaller artist so i've seen them on on instagram Mm -hmm. they're dope as hell they're really good give them a listen yeah Mm -hmm. they're dope as hell they i even commented on one of their posts they write really really good music about about trans people and non-binary people in the struggle mm-hmm. definitely go check them yeah. out 100 percent. they have a song coming out i think tonight too about i think it's called like elephant or something mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah i'm excited for that they one. will be in the description below definitely go check them out very very important to support smaller and bigger uh non-binary and trans artists for sure thank you for sharing that with me um and elliot where can people follow you okay i mainly post on instagram um and that is at elio tate and then i'm gonna have i post on twitter a lot or x whatever you want to call it um but my name on twitter it's like elliot like on like from et i love that it's like three l's one two i's one o three t's um and then i have tiktok as well but i don't completely understand the algorithm dude, so i don't post on it as much <laughs> algorithm ass and it's transphobic dude i don't get it it's fucked up. <laughs> but my name on there is elliot schmilliot cute so. i love that <laughs> uh elliot's handles will be in the description below and on screen for anybody who wants to give him a follow i definitely think you should because elliot you were very vulnerable today and you told your story and i'm super proud of you and i love you and i love your freaking vibes and this was a I great episode i'd love you more bro like 
I do want to say, I'm writing a book about my life. <gasps> oh um, my god! I'll buy it right now. It's not done time. yet, but that will be coming soon. So Period. I just want to put that out there. Good for you. I love that. As you fucking Thank should. You, you got to get. Your, I think all trans people got to get their story out there. I think that's awesome. Yep. Um. Oh my god! Yeah, tell me when it fucking when you're done with it and when it comes out because oh, I got, I'll, I'll send you a signed copy. Oh fuck yeah! Hell yeah! Uh -huh. Are you kidding? I'll finish that shit in a <laughs> night. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Uh, Elliot, thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate you again. Yeah, you should be very you. proud of yourself. You were vulnerable today. And I think that's super, super, super important for trans people to be on the internet yeah. because we don't have a lot of resources. So thank you. Agreed. Um, and make sure you follow me at HRT Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. I post almost every single day. Uh, join my Discord. We got a lot of trans people hanging out, having a good time. Uh, do that. That would That would mean a lot to me. Subscribe to my Patreon. I have so much fucking bonus content coming out of my ass on my Patreon. So if you're not subscribed at this point, like, it's genuinely frustrating me. So please go do that. I would appreciate it. That is always in the description below. And I'm out of breath. Um, make sure you turn my post notifications on because I post podcast episodes every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I drop after dark episodes at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday, and I live stream on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have content coming out of my ass, so please turn on my post notifications. I would appreciate it. And that's about it for this week. Elliot, thank you so much for being on. This was great. Thank you for having me. Of course. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.